Firstly, I would like to congratulate all the finalists, 30 finalists for IHIP's uh, pitching UG, uh, UGPFF for the year 2021 and wishing you good luck for the final round. So before the talks begin, allow me to introduce the speaker for today's section. The speaker for today's section is Mr. Ahmad Sharifuddin Samsudi. He is the lecturer at our school, Hasman Hazim International Business School. Mr. Hamad Sharifuddin Samsurin has experience in blending management, integrating marketing communications, advertising and promotions. And recently, he gave a very interesting topic on for the uh, for the uh, for the free month 2021 on elevator pitching for us so it's really valuable input for their ips members so now without further delay i would like to welcome mr ahmad sharifuddin samsurin to deliver a, a talk for today and the floor is yours mr ahmad sharifuddin please welcome thank you dr yogeshwari Assalamualaikum, very good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is uh, doing fine. Uh, this is 2 p.m. and um, I know that most of you at this hour of the day is not really productive, but we will try to make it simple. We will try to make it interesting. And at any time of the presentation, you can actually stop me and ask questions or give comments. So no problem. I hope that is okay with Dr. Yogesh, yeah? Yeah, sure, the, Doctor. Oh, yeah. Sure, the top, uh, the title of the afternoon's um, talk is workshop. So it is not really a workshop, um, but it is more on a on a talk and on a presentation of uh, pitching. Yeah. So I see that um, the marketing students are here, and I am sure that most of them um, are familiar with this topic at least. For those who are in my who were in my class uh, last time, uh, Dr. Yogesh did mention integrated marketing communication just now, and I think Jamie, uh, you were in my IMC class, and I did gave an introduction to pitching and gave some tips on pitching. But today we will um, make it a little bit more detail and uh, expand it, it a little bit than what we have uh, discussed in class. So for the students of uh, accounting and um, technology, so if you have any questions, if you do not and or and or not, are not familiar with some terms and uh, uh, terminology that I use, uh, you can always ask me. Uh, you can interrupt the presentation and ask me. Okay. So now uh, let's start the session. I'm going to share my my um, presentation. So I think I'll share my screen. Yeah, I hope everyone can see my screen, my presentation slide. The title is Pitching for Funding. That's your guess. Is it clear? Okay. Christopher say, yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. So why the title is pitching for funding? Because the program or the event that you are in now is uh, undergraduate pitching for funding. So basically you are asking for some funds for your dissertation or thesis project. So why are we talking about this topic? Because at the end of the day, we are all at some point our salesmen. We are always trying to sell something. Even though you are in the accounting uh, courses program, you think you might think that, ah, oh, I'm in accounting, so I will not involve in selling. Yes, you are probably right, but you are at least trying to sell something during your interview, during your job interview. So you're selling yourself basically to the uh, to the potential companies or the potential employers of yours. So you are saying to them, actually you're presenting yourself, you're selling to them yourself, meaning that what can you do? 
what can you contribute to the organization and why should they invest in you why should they um invest in 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 their resources on you because you if you are a good employee if you are an asset to the company they might want to um hold you for as long as possible yeah nobody wants to work one week or two week or one month or two months but when you are into a job into an employment contract at least you are there for at least one year or two years so this one year or two year require resources so why should they fork out this amount of money just to get you on board so at at some point we are all salesmen so we need to to get people on board so that they better understand us they better understand our ideas if for example upon graduation upon graduating from the programs in our hips you wanted to apply for some grants you wanted to apply for some funding for example what you're doing now you have to make the people or the panel who has the money to understand and embrace your ideas so if you're just merely presenting facts they will they have listened to facts they they know all the facts about the business they have experience they have like 10 20 years experience of listening to people's presentation so they might want more from you they want to see more from you and definitely they want to see your ideas so they need to believe that at that very moment when you open your mouth for example i mentioned Jamie because i know her or Koyum i saw Koyum in the list as well just now because they were my students and Koyum is still my student this semester the moment you open your mouth so the person in front of you is already thinking this girl this lady or this man or this young man is worth is worth investing is is worth paying money for so this is why we are here today so how how to achieve this as i said before merely stating the facts won't do if you say i know you are some of you are Uh, the accounting students you you deal with facts and figures each and every day since the day you entered the course the program you are learning and studying and trained to present facts and figures but those facts and figures won't do just the facts and figures won't do you need to do some selling what is your unique selling proposition so what is unique selling proposition jamie Jamie can you share with us your understanding of unique selling proposition? Okay, Hello Dr. Cheng. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um for Jamie, for or? yep. Yeah, Jamie. Uh, please, so please. for for my understanding of the unique selling proposition proposition is our selling uh the unique selling point our value that we need to deliver to our customer. Uh explain it in a simple terms jemi like um any layman would understand when i will say oh you have to have this unique selling proposition or we call, we always call it usp what is you what is your usp so how do you explain it jemi uh, sorry for the interruption in chd yeah uh there is no accounting students only management and marketing students oh i see because there are no accounting students that are doing yes. psm this semester Yes. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Okay, Jamie. Okay. Uh, proceed, Jamie, please. Um, it's related to our like competitive advantages. Hmm. So, yeah, that that is very that is very good. That, that is true as, as well. But the thing is, to put it simply, it's just what makes you unique. What makes you unique and what is your differentiation criteria or what what makes you different from the person next to you? If for example I want to give money to either Jamie or Koyum so what makes Jamie special so you have to uh you have to show you have to project your unique selling proposition just one simple example uh, Air Asia everybody knows that Air Asia's unique selling proposition is 
affordable flights. So they say now everyone can fly. So they are projecting affordability, uh, cheap, cheap flights, for example. So when you are presenting, you must make sure that the person in front of you understand what is the uniqueness of this project of yours and why this particular project so important and need to be done and why they have to give money to you instead of the person who is presenting next or the person who is presenting prior uh, from uh, prior to you right? and why do we have to execute this project why why so the why uh, so you need to articulate this you need to project this articulate means you need to project this you need to show uh, simply said you need to show them that this is, of course, my final year project, and the rest of the presenters today are going to present the same, more or less the same final year project. But this project is special because blah, 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 and it needs this kind of money because blah, blah, blah. So if I get this money, it will be able to do blah, blah, blah. So that is how you project your unique selling proposition. So the prospects or the person who you are pitching to, they need to see the bigger picture. They need to see the bigger picture. Why? Because they want to jump in on your project. They need to see the bigger picture. They need to see your vision. Even though you are just doing, maybe you will say, oh, I'm just doing my final year project. But why? Why do you choose that particular topic and field in the first place? Why? What is the vision behind it? And what are the ideals? The ideals is the things that you want to achieve. More often than not, through your PSM, you may not be able to achieve the real objective of your research. You may not be able to solve the real problem, but at least you have the vision. You have the vision and you have the ideals. Ideal ni macam... Your targets, like your, your, it's not your target, but actually, it's your ideals, the, the things, the, the ideal things that you want to achieve or you want to solve in, in the world. For example, you do this environmental friendly research, green marketing research, because you really want to see the people of this country, at least, or in Johor or in, in this part of the world, really do protect the environment. So you start with yourself and you do this research. These are ideal, are your ideal and your vision as well. So you need to project this as well for your uh, panel or for the prospects because they will see that you are a visionary person and you have a larger goals to achieve. So you are starting with the small step of your final year project. That is one of the example and perspective. I hope you guys understand this. Uh, this is talking about vision and ideals. This is uh, Dore the, the, the writer, Dore the writer from a university in Amsterdam, uh, education professor. So, so what is what, what are ideals? So according to the writer, Ideals are existentially important, not only because they provide reason. Ideals not just for reason, but also for intrinsic reason, the inside of you. They give meaning to your life, thus contributing to the sense of your identity. So if you are doing, for example, just for example, yeah, you are doing a research on the de decriminalization of wheat or decriminalization of ganja to be used as medicinal um, purpose for medicinal purpose so maybe they will see that oh you are so um maybe you, are you into wheat are you supporting the wheat but no you will try to project that you are so open that a taboo a taboo subject such as wheat in malaysia you can discuss openly and discuss academically and in the perspective of scientific findings so that, that is um, your intrinsic reason, the reason inside of you. And people can, can see that if you, if you have these ideals. Yeah? So do they have time? Definitely the answer is no. Of course, we do not have 
the time to explain everything that we want to do. Uh, it is difficult to explain our, our thoughts and intention, but we definitely have at least one or two minutes. Yeah, one or two minutes to get these ideas, these visions across. So that is why we can pitch the idea. We can pitch the idea. So I'm not introducing, for, for most of you, at least the marketing students, I think uh, you're already um, familiar with this term elevator pitch. So what is an elevator pitch? What is the difference? What is the difference between a pitch and a presentation? A presentation basically is a, pres is a presentation or you are presenting some facts to the audience. You are presenting some facts. You are presenting to them. This is A, this is B, this is C. But a pitch is telling the people you are presenting or you're pitching to, to get on board with you, to have the same understanding as you, as you and to buy what you are selling. Buy selling doesn't mean always selling a tangible products, but maybe idea. Maybe today I'm pitching to the whole university or to the management of the university to make it legal for people to smoke weed in the university. Huh. So people will say, what, what, what? This is, this is, what, what is this? So you pitch to them, you make them understand, you make them embrace your ideas and your values, your ideals and your vision, and then when they are on board, they will say, yeah, uh, in UTM, it is legal for people to smoke weed, for example. Yeah, just for example. And we are recording this. I might be in trouble. So that is a pitch. Uh, the difference between a pitch and a present. Most of you, and up to this moment, from your first year until your final year, you had done so much presentation. But some of the presentations might not be effective, some are okay, you get marks for it, but maybe none of the presentation, the lecturer really believe you. Maybe he or she just listened to you and then gave you marks. But if he or she believes in what you are saying, not just you are going to get good marks, but maybe she will guide you more on your idea and share with you more on your projects, and you'll gain a lot, a lot more than just grades in your studies. So this is, this is most important. Everybody can get an A. The next person to you will get an A. But what is the value of that A? So you can choose to get that value together with that A and what it can do for you for the future. Okay? So... Coming back to the elevator pitch. So what is an elevator pitch? It is a quick persuasion uh, speech, quick persuasive speech that is used to create interest in a project, concept, or people, ideas, something like that. So why, I explain why we use the term elevator uh, next the, in the next slide. So basically, what it what it mean what I mean, what I meant by it distills your idea into the simplest clearest point of value is that you have this big idea and you get this big idea and you write it down on paper that becomes your proposal. So how long is your proposal? 15, 20 page proposal? So how do you explain this 15, 20 page proposal to the next person who is interested to know what you are doing? I think uh, up to this moment, you might have questions from your friends, from your family, or from your juniors asking you, what is final year project? And what are you doing for your final year project? What actually are you researching for your final year project? So you cannot give him or her the 15 or 20 page proposal. Uh, this is the proposal, please read it yourself. That is not, that is rude basically, and definitely not effective not effective for the person's understanding. So you have to get all these 15, 20 page proposal, transform them into the simplest, clearest points of value. So they can see what makes you different, uh, what is the direction 
of your work and then instill enough curiosity to ask you for the whole 15, 20 page. Can I have the whole 15, 20 page document so that I can read it myself? I'm very interested in your work. So that is what a page needs to do. So theoretically, it should be no longer than the time uh, you need to write an elevator. In our hips, we have, in our hips building, we have five floors, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Ground one, two, three, four. Yeah, five floors. So if you want to go to the fifth floor, oh, sorry, if you want to go to the fourth floor, because ground, first, second, third, fourth. If you want to go to the top floor, from the ground floor, you uh, push the button of the fourth floor button. How long do you think it will take for the lift to, to take you from ground floor to the top floor? In our hips, maybe 30 seconds? I think not more than 30 seconds. If there is no paper stopping the elevator on the first floor, second floor, if it is a smooth ride, it will be in the region of 30 seconds. So this is the time that you need, that you need to make a pitch so that the person who is listening to the pitch, who is listening to your pitch, will understand what you are doing, what is your registration, what is your, uh, what you are doing, what is your intention, sorry, what is your intention, and what is the direction of your project and wants to be part of what you are doing. So this 30 seconds time frame. So if the higher the building, it might take like two minutes, things like that. So in a nutshell, it is just what it sounds like, a short 30 to 60 second well-crafted pitch. Well-crafted means you carefully design it. Of course, you practice it. It's in your head. Whenever you need to say it, you can say it just like that tip of the tongue or just like a snap of your finger. Yeah. Uh, 30 second to 60 second well-crafted business page telling someone who you are, if you are introducing yourself, uh, and why you should invest, why they should invest in your project or endeavor. I have some videos and some clips that I love to share with you. Uh, I will give some introduction to this clip basically. So if you see this clip, it is taken from the um, famous and po popular TV series on HBO, HBO if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mad Men, Mad Men, M-A-D-M-E-N. So it is a pun there, Mad Men, Mad is Mad, but it's, it is actually talking about um, the advertising industry in the 60s, the heyday or the golden era of advertising in New York, in Madison Avenue, New York. So that is why they call it Mad Men, Madison Avenue Men. So most of the big advertising agencies uh, were located there in Madison Avenue. So it is the center, the epicenter of advertising, not just in the United States, but the world as well. So it is a benchmark what they are doing back then and still are, I think. So the character name on the left, the, the character on the right is his partner, I think, in the, in the series. And the character on the left, uh, John Hamm, uh, plays the character named Don, Don Draper. So Don Draper is the main character in this series. And why I chose this particular clip, although it is a fiction, but it uh, amplifies and it shows, exemplifies, it shows why saying the correct thing at the correct time and well-crafted words with the correct meaning can do to people's perspective and motivation. So this is Don Draper. Uh, listen to his basically what I call a pitch in this situation. Understand that. The financial straddling required is for a very good reason. We've been included in an elite group of agencies invited to pitch Jaguar cars. So, congratulations. Anything else? Yes, actually, I'd like to say something. Would you? 
Last year at this time, whether you knew it or not, the survival of this company was on the line. And I look at the faces in this room who have given their all to this tenuous recovery, and I say, prepare to take a great leap forward. Prepare to swim the English Channel and then drown in champagne. There are six weekends between now and the pitch. We are going to spend them all here. We will celebrate Christmas here. We will ring in the new year together. And in the end, we will represent Jaguar, and it will be worth it. Every agency on Madison Avenue is defined by the moment they got their car. When we land Jaguar, the world will know we've arrived. Understand that. So basically, what happened was, at least in the TV series, Don Draper is asking uh, the employees to sacrifice their holidays, the Christmas holidays, the New Year holidays, just to prepare a sales pitch for the potential, the potentially Jaguar account. Um, meaning that Jaguar account means the Jaguar, the car manufacturer, is asking them to pitch a proposal so that if the proposal is accepted, they will do all the Jaguar marketing communications, advertising and promotion. So between this day and the day that they are supposed to present and pitch to Jaguar, they have six weeks. And then in the six weeks, they have uh, holidays, uh, Christmas, uh, New Year, weekends. So instead of the employees, instead of employees grunting or complaining that they have to sacrifice the holidays, they cannot be with their family during Christmas, during New Year, sacrifice all the weekends, they go to a social life, they are clapping hands and on board with Don Draper. Why? Because he put it in a very nice way, in a very persuasive way that this is what we are here for. Screw the holidays. When we get the Jaguar account, we will announce to the world we are here, meaning here in the, in the uh, industry of advertising and promotion. So that is one fictional example. And this is my favorite person to picture, the late Steve Jobs. He's so good. There are several reasons why I think he is so good. Number one, if you really think about it, Apple does not create or invent a totally new product. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you think and if you have data showing that oh, Apple created a, new, a, to a totally new product in the marketplace, never been invented by anybody else, you can show me now. But in my opinion, Apple does not and did not and still does not invent anything new. They did not invent smartphone. They did not invent MP3 player but they make it better, definitely. So this is uh, Steve Jobs pitching for the iPod Nano, the iPod Nano. I think this is circa 2007, 2008, that, that, that year. Today, folks. Now, the iPod Mini is what all competitors have for size obvious because the iPod mini is the most popular mp3 player in the world. It's the most popular iPod. It's the most popular MP3. So that's the one everybody's focused on. Well, today we're going to do something pretty different. Today, replace it. Replace it with something. Now let's go back to the beginning because we started this all with a thousand songs. We started it original iPod. And then we carried a thousand songs in your pocket over to the iPod mini. Now we're going to replace the iPod. Play an entire
entirely new ground up design. So, it has a thousand songs on repeat. It's called the iPod Nano. A thousand songs in your pocket. iPod Nano. So, let's get a camera. This pocket's been the one that you're always going in. Actually, the iPod. <coughs> Wonder what this pocket's for. I've always wondered that. Well, now we know because this is the new iPod. So, what is actually he's doing there, Steve Jobs? So basically, Steve Jobs is kind of solving a problem for the users of MP3 players. Previously, if you are a, an avid music fan, if you want to travel, you have to bring your Sony, if Sony, the, the brand name is Walkman, the Sony Walkman. So you have the cassette tape. And then you have the Discman. Discman. You're using the CD. And so in one CD, the most that you can, the normally the industry standard is 10 songs in one album per CD. So if you're traveling, you want, you want to listen more than 10 songs, so you have to bring a bag of CDs. I used to have this bag of CDs. And you put the CDs in the CD sleeve and you have a bag and you carry them around with your disc man or, or CD player, the portable CD player. This man is a brand name of Sony. And then Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs says, look, we, we are creating MP3 player. It is called iPod and iPod mini. So it can store the minimum storage. You can store 1,000 songs. So people are clapping their hands. And now they're introducing iPod Nano, smaller size. It can fit in the jeans, the small pocket in your jeans. So that is what the small pocket is for, for your jeans, to store your iPod Nano. So you can travel now, you can be where, whenever, wherever you want, and you still can listen to your collection of songs and music because you have 1,000 songs in your pocket. So he's trying to sell. This is unique selling proposition, the USB. But if you really think about it, why do you need 1,000 songs in your pocket? Can you listen to the 1,000 songs in your pocket? The, the answer is no. But he is so persuasive and so effective in his pitch that people actually buy this iPod mini, iPod, iPod mini, iPod nano, iPod shuffle. So they were selling like hotcakes back then. Um, yeah. So now the function of the iPod is taken over by the, the iPhone because iPhone or the, your smartphone can do almost anything. It is like a small computer now. Yeah, small computer. But Steve Jobs is so successful in his sales pitch, in his, he called it the Steve Jobs presentation, presentation, the Apple presentation. This format of presenting by corporate now is a standard format. Samsung will do this kind of presentation. Everyone in the industry is doing this kind of presentation. Why? Because it is so effective. A big screen behind of you, and you're walking in front of the big screen and pitching, not just presenting, but pitching, and done it semi-formally. So Steve Jobs, as you know, never wears full suit. I've never seen Steve Jobs wearing suit, by the way. So this, that is his unique selling proposition as well. That what makes his diff, what makes him different from the rest of the people, the player in the industry. So he wears his T-shirt and Levi's and Nike sneakers. So this is Steve Jobs style. So now this style is being copied, although most of the other competitors or players in the industry are not dressing up like him, but they are dressed down. They, wear, they may be wearing suit, but with no tie, or sports jacket with jeans and shirt. So this is the Steve Jobs style or the Apple presentation pitching style. This is a clip from BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. 
uh, the dragon's den. In this part of the world, we get the shark tank, the shark tank, shark, shark tank Australia, shark tank US. So what happens in this reality TV show is that uh, a panel of investor, capital investor, uh, give you the opportunity, give the contestants or the participants in the reality show uh, opportunity to present for funding. If you have a product, if you have a project, you wanna uh, you wanna get more funding. You want to create larger market for your products. You want to get a hook with better distributor. So you can pitch your idea here. So this clip is long, but I will play until the end of his pitch because I think this guy not only he has a good idea. This is a digital product, by the way. Not just he got. Uh, a good idea, but he smoothly articulate and smoothly pitch his idea. So let's watch it. Very smooth pitch. So this, the pitch is smooth. The objectives are clear. The business model is clear. What he wants to do is clear. So this is an example of a real good pitch. Okay. Dragons. So, all these pictures and these techniques, when to use it? Of course, you are facing this uh, undergraduate pitching for funding. Uh, when is it? Uh, Dr. Jorges, uh, exactly what, when is the date? On 12th December, Doctor. Uh, on 12th, 12th of December. December. So, you have like Two weeks plus, well, maybe two weeks to prepare. So it is ample time. You have ample time, basically. So just a quick, um, just a quick points I'm sharing with you here. Not just for salespeople, like you have seen in these three uh, tips example. Uh, it is not just for products and services, but you can use it to introduce your organization to potential clients or customers. You can use it. Uh, to sell an idea to your boss, you saw your superior, uh, to tell people about the change initiative that you are leading, for example, amongst yourself in your students' association, you might have some, some activities and you might want to change the activities that normally been done by the students, so you want to change the perspective, the direction of the students' association strategy, for example. So you might want to use this technique. You could even craft one to tell people what you do for a living, yeah? Maybe when you go back home for uh, New Year, for Christmas, for Hari Raya, and uh, people asking you, ah, Kaya, what are you doing now? Are you studying? Instead of telling, yeah, I'm studying at UTM, doing marketing program, you, you pitch them, you pitch them about what you do uh, for now. So that is one idea. The photo of this guy that I chose is Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah, my, maybe some of you know him. Yeah, He is a comic, a stand-up comic. Why I like this guy? Because he is articulate. He can, of course, he do the presentation, the pitch is more of entertainment, the form of entertainment. But if you listen to the, to the comedy, to the stand-up comedy, to the shows that uh, he performs, he is trying to sell something, his ideas, his ideals, and his vision. So before we go further, we should always visit the fundamentals. We need to learn to articulate better. We need to learn how to talk and speak better. I'm still learning, and I'm sharing with you. I hope we can, all of us can benefit from this uh, sharing session. We should learn to make our speech more meaningful. So this is just... I'll give you like one or two minutes uh, on Trevor Noah. Uh, the, the topic is immigrants because in the US when he did his show, he's South African, by the way. So he, he is now in the United States uh, hosting shows and doing shows because as you know, US is the center for entertainment, yeah, the business entertainment of the world. So he's talking about immigrants. And this is during Trump's, administration, President Trump's administration, where one of the policies is not really favorable to the immigrants. So this is Trevor Noah's pick on the immigrant situation. I feel like 
there should be a rule in America that should say <laughs> so no immigrants, no spies. So how do we learn how to talk better? So I'm referring to what is called the Hill by Julian Treasure, four foundations to make our speech more powerful and meaningful. So number one is honesty, being true in what you say, being straight and clear. By honesty, I do not mean that like 100% like total honesty. When I see Koyum, he looks too skinny, I will say, ah, Koyum, macam tak cukup makan. So that is not good anyway. That is rude. But maybe honest, but rude. But at least you are true in what you say. When you are presenting, you are pitching for your project, you really want to do something with the project. You really want to collect data on that uh, topic. You really want to solve some of the problems related to that topic. Yeah? Be true in what you say, being straight, and be clear. Do not beat around the bush. Number two is authenticity. Just be yourself. Do not imitate others. Be original. Be yourself. For example, now, the trend is environmental-friendly products. And a lot of people are doing research on being environmental friendly. So you are jumping on the bandwagon, but you yourself is not it. You are not really, really into this environmental thing. You are on it because it is the trend now. So when you speak about it, people can feel that it is not authentic. And people can gauge your honesty of the subject matter number three integrity do what you say be somebody that people can trust you are presenting you are doing research on green marketing but you yourself do not at all practice green marketing you're presenting you are doing research i have a student i have a student a part-time student doing research on uh, doing a project on promoting edible straw you have the Plastic straw that goes into the nose of the turtle. <laughs> that is what the media is saying. All the promotion, marketing, communication. So do not use plastic straw because it will hurt the turtle. So that group of students, they are presenting on edible straw, not made of plastic, definitely. Not made of um, paper that you have now. Like if you go to Starbucks, they give you paper straw. And after some time, if you are too long, on it, it will be mushy. The paper straw will be mushy and you cannot suck on it. So they are presenting on edible straw made from rice. The straw is made from rice. So you can throw it away or you can eat it basically because it is made from rice. But if you are really into this environmental thing, so you buy the edible straw, you do not uh, get plastic bags from uh, the supermarket. Uh, so you uh, try to save your electricity bill. So that is integrity. Do what you say. Number four is love. So what is the meaning of love? So love is not I love you, the romance love. It is not far from that, but at least wishing people well. So as a Muslim, it is easy for me to practice this because whenever I want to start something, whenever I see people, whenever I got into class, the first thing I would do is give the salam. Assalamu alaikum. Which means, Assalamu alaikum is in Arabic, which means peace be upon you. So I'm, I am wishing people well. I'm wishing them to be in a peaceful situation. I do not start my class with the hell with you. Let the hell with you go to hell. No, I wish them well. Assalamu alaikum. May you attain peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> Why? Why? Somebody is laughing because I used to go to hell. So it is hell. Honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love. Always wish people well. But of course, do it, do it honestly. So that is the paradigm. Hail is the paradigm. Honesty, authenticity, authenticity, integrity, and love. And you have another set of tools as well. 
we all have this set of tools. Um, how you say things, how you say things. So you, how you say things, you can use this toolbox, which everyone has it, but we may not realize it, or we do not know how to use it because we never practiced it. Tools that we all can use to increase the power of your speech. Number one, register. Locate your register. Falsetto may not always work. Falsetto, always using ah, the head voice. If you have the chance, if you have the means and opportunity, especially if you are a marketing student, you might want to register or to enlist in a, to register and to find a vocal class. Not to sing, not so much uh, learning how to sing, but learning how to control your voice so that you know your register. You know the head voice, you know the low voice. You know why? Because sometimes we want to use the chest voice, the chest voice for weed. Because research has shown that politicians at least, if you are one of your ambitions is to, to be involved in politics, you need to do this research and go into class. How to talk with your chest voice, especially if you're a man. Do you know Barry White, the singer, the American singer? He has a very low voice. So he is known as the voice of lovemaking. So people actually play his songs on the CD or whatever when they are together just to make babies. This is true. This is real. Barry White. Mm. So look at your register because most of the time you want to speak with your chest voice. You do not want to speak with your head voice all of the time. Number two is timbre. Timbre is how your voice feels. So this is a little bit difficult because some people are born with this. Some people has a warm, soft, rich voice like Barry White just now. Some people have like normal voice like me. I have a normal voice, prosody. Monotone versus dynamic statement versus question. Uh, this will give meaning to your conversation. So that is, mono, that is monotone. You have to be dynamic. Sometimes you have a stress point. Sometimes you take it back. Sometimes you give statement. Sometimes you give questions. So this is dynamic. Yeah? If you listen carefully to Trevor Noah just now, he's, he is just making a joke, but he used all this prosody. Yeah? Sometimes he stresses the point, sometimes he slows down. He lowers down uh, his voice just to a point and a statement. Okay? Number four is pace. Uh, you can talk too fast or too slow. So you have to know and control your pace. If you are rushing for time, you may be talking too fast and the person who is listening to you, they won't understand. So you might want to know and to create or, or to develop or to design your pitch just nice for the time you are given, okay? And sometimes you slow down your pace just to as much as possible. Do not fill this gap of your speech with um, mm, ah, uh, Silence can be powerful. Pitch. Incorrect pitch might imply a different meaning for the same words or sentences. Hey, you are beautiful. Are you making an accusation? Are you complimenting someone? You are correct. It, is that the correct pitch? <laughs> so you need to know the correct pitch in order for you to convey the correct message. Number seven is volume. The volume of your voice is important. You do not want to shout. I understand if you are presenting, you want to broadcast. If we are presenting in a room, in our normal classroom, and we do not have a microphone, we, want, we, we may want to project our voice because we may want, we want the person who is sitting at the far corner of the room is able to listen and hear what we are saying and understand them. But you cannot broadcast all the time. You cannot broadcast all the time. You have to control the volume of your speech. 
Now back to the elevator speech. I think we have like five minutes more. Uh, I think we should end at three. Sorry, yeah, end at three. Now back to the elevator pitch. This is a standard format. My name is blah, blah, blah. The position of blah, blah, blah. Company manufactures this. Target customer allows them to do what? The very proposition, unlike our competitor. And finally, the call for action. This is a standard business pitch format that is used by the people that you have listened just now, especially the Dragon's Den presentation. This is, he's using this standard format. So this is the example. Hi, my name is Bob Smith. I am the CEO of Hydrolyzer Water Company. We manufacture the Hydrolyzer Max Light, a commercial grade water purification system that use tripin osmotic process that dramatically reduce the content of impurities in the drinking water. And so this pitching. Yeah. And finally, you can get call for action. If you go to YouTube channel, you can watch a video showing blah, blah, blah. So this is the normal standard example. But for your case, for the pitching for funding, you may want to use this. Identify your goal. Explain what you do. What is your research? Communicate your unique selling proposition, your uniqueness, the uniqueness of the project, which is different from the rest of the people presenting and pitching in today's session. Remember, the person who are listening to the pitch is not just academics, it's not just your lecturers, there are people from the industry as well. Yeah? So they need to listen, they need to hear something which is very tangible and real. So communicate your USP. Use story, powerful narrative. What is a story? You may begin and end this pitch with a story. The example that we watched for Trevor Noah just now, the story is about racism. Basically, the story is about racism the point is about racism, and the point he's making is about discrimination towards immigrants. So we should not discriminate, discriminate immigrants in the United States. If you do not like the immigrants, but you like the food, you are being a hypocrite, so to speak, the point that he's making. But he's using the story. He's using the story like the white person, the white people is traveling all around the world just for spice. By the way, it is true. The spices of the world is traded, was traded basically in this region, in our region. Spices from India and whatever, from Sulawesi, from the Malay archipelago. They were traded here and the center was Malacca back then. And the Europeans, they travel, they sail halfway around the world just to get a piece of share in the spice trade market. Namely, back then, the most expensive, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is the pepper, Lada Hitam. And if you read about the Johor Sultanate, the modern Johor Sultanate, they became rich because of they own a lot of pepper or Lada Hitam uh, Ladang, uh, uh, pepper uh, orchards or, or um, farms. So that, it, that, that is worth similar to what petroleum is to the new economy now. So back then it was the pepper, the lada hitam. So you can use this story because people will remember the story. And when people remember the story, people can associate, when I say people, I mean the potential investor, the prospect, the panelist, can associate what you are doing with the story and they can remember more and they can engage it more in their head and minds, in their hearts and minds. So they will want to know it more. So they, And then you engage them with question. You are gauging whether they are on board or you are gauging whether they understand of what you are pitching. Okay? So final thought. Final thought before I end this session. Number one, number one, sell your ideas. Do not be afraid to sell your ideas. You are young. You have a lot of ideas. You are 
passionate about what you are doing as a young people as young people you should be passionate about what you are doing sell your ideas during the pitching for for funding and relearn how to make your speech more meaningful and powerful exploit and use the toolbox that i shared with you exploit it use it maybe not all that is okay but if you can get one or two or three a combination of those you can really master it it will make wonders to your pitching and presentation finally of course pitch your ideas in in, in an effective way um, maybe similar to what i've shown the example from the previous slide okay so finally i will leave you with one more short presentation and performance from Trevor Noah talking about colonization Trevor Noah talking about colonization 